We are at Acrisure Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for the Blue Gold game to close out the 15 workout spring session of the Pittsburgh Panthers. A pro style offense for you for so long. And now it's a little different. You okay with the switch? I love it. I love it. I'm a defensive guy. Um, but, you know, I think all defensive guys know offense and know what hurts. And there. And so a lot of folks want to see him in action today. And on first down, Pitt goes to the air. It's incomplete. Trying to find Dejon Reynolds, the redshirt junior from Springfield, Illinois. Our quarters today, a little shorter than normal, but we have conventional college football scoring. Oh, thanks. Second down and 10 after the incompletion from Eli Holstein. Daniel Carter, the starting running back, takes the handoff and gets, no, it's a fake. Holstein, wearing that red jersey, gets hit for a loss, and that'll bring up third down and long. He, he did get hit, I, but I'm all for it, former defensive player. And working with tempo this year. And he is down with Scott credited with that sack. Defense, more than 11 players on the field. Five yard penalty, third down. Another flag, pre-snap. And this is not to be unexpected when you are. Offense, number 55, five yard penalty, third down. When you are installing an entirely new offense, that penalty goes against B.J. Williams, who by the championship subdivision, that was outstanding. Keep it on the ground on first down. Yards after contact for Daniel Carter. Javon McIntyre last year at Western Carolina. Holstein with some air underneath that pass down the sideline. It is incomplete. Looked like a potentially catchable ball, but Third down, Holstein's going to run for it, and they mark him as a first down. Again, no. the guy's offense, right, Ron? Absolutely, aren't as they always? always? <laughs> Strike over the middle, it's caught a catch for first down. Johnson with his reception, first of the... Now, Joel's Goff, the freshman running back from York, PA, comes back. Flag goes down, pass is picked off. Well, we'll Johnson play stands. John. In the neutral zone, snap. Five yard penalty. Five yard penalty. Five yard penalty. First down. First down. Huddle, but day in and day out in practice, they've been facing a pro style. So this is an adjustment for the defense as well. Goff, the true freshman who has opened some eyes this spring, with the carry. He is from Central York High School. He's got speed to burn. Eventually, be a contributor this fall. Snap is dropped and covered. At about the 33-yard line. Returning center. We've got three starting offensive linemen not playing in this game. A number of players who are injured or a little bit dinged up and figured they would protect him from any sort of hit. That is a first down pitch and catch. Quickly and they're focused on space and timing and not necessarily matchups. Take the handoff to Carter, trying to find the tight end, Gavin Bartholomew, one of the captains for this blue team. On second down, pass into double coverage, incomplete, and trying to find Kenny Johnson, who, by the way, was drafted first overall by the gold team. So it's third down, stack receivers to the top of your screen, now in motion, Dejon Reynolds looking that way. Now Holstein steps up on the move. Misses his intended target, which was red. on a windy afternoon. Our first field goal attempt comes from Sam Carpenter. He's got the distance, and it is good. Three points on the board as we are underway in the annual blue gold game here in Pittsburgh. Thrilled to see the sun for the first time in a while. Yeah, this is a glorious day. So Sam Carpenter it kicks so it off and short. And we are pleased to be joined by one of the greats in pit football you. history. Self and Mitchell and Ness is just kind of like, it really, it's exceeded my expectations. And quite honestly, I don't, I don't really even know what that means. Only because I, I knew it was going to be good. I just didn't know it was going to be, you know, since I was a little kid. It means a lot to me. Yeah, and before we talk about this year's football team, I want to ask you about as a two-time academic All-American, obviously 
Your schoolwork was very important to you, and you came back to deliver the commencement speech two years ago. Yeah. What's the connection? Four years that I was here, I was able to, you know, maintain a pretty good perspective on the fact that I needed to take advantage of making sure that I set myself up for my career after football. Obviously, when people come here and they go to any Power 5 school, you know, a lot of football, a lot of fun in college, dude. Okay, I spent a lot of time at the football stadium and then in the library and then down at the Cathedral of Learning because I really wanted to take care of business. And I think that's something that... That, that message never gets old. I think a lot of time, look, there's there's obviously people like the great Aaron Donald who will be here in a little while who wind up having Hall of Fame careers, earn so much money, generational money, that it really doesn't matter. Be cool to, or rather, it wasn't cool to always go to the library. It wasn't cool to always be studying and always, you know, and not going to parties and all. But I try to tell people like I tell my own kids, actually, it is pretty damn cool, and I'll tell you why. Because my second career after my playing days has far style offense. Yep and move to a spread. How, yep. how do you feel about it? What do Pitt fans think about it? A lot of college coaches looking broad. I know you travel around the country and you talk to a lot of different coaches. Um, scoring points, bringing an ex of you building your program down, and if you can't do that, and if you don't have that as part of your DNA and a part of you know fundamentally how you approach the game, you're going to be behind. Well, I think it's a great move. For well, it's kind of like going you know by way of the dinosaur a little bit and now it's just about look how can we get these young quarterbacks to play quickly play efficiently eight yarnell the redshirt yeah. junior from austin texas who started the last two regular season games last year and is the number one at least for now and has had a good spring practice running back was montrevious um, slash watch Jake Renda, a reserve tight end, which to end the season last year. And he has a really nice arm, and there's a look at it. When the game start. Pass interference as he tries to find Kanate Mumpfield, who is being defended by Noah Biglow. I found it interesting in our conversation with him. He hasn't played that much here, so it's been a long time since he has been a number one guy and gotten lots of reps. You saw that list of alums headed by... Baker Mayfield, Gail Gilbert. They've had some quarterbacks. Film and is getting again the most reps he has ever had, certainly here at Pittsburgh and in a long, long time. Whistle blown before the pass was delivered. So he is down. Again, wearing that red jersey. You can't touch him. A new technology being tested out this year. Like we have seen in the NFL for years, college now having that. And so one player on offense and one player on defense, oftentimes the Mike linebacker, which is the case here for Pitt with Brandon. And the number two offensive line is with the blue team. What is he eating? The head coach is eating a sandwich during the game. <laughs> a little different sense than they don't have a gold jersey. They don't want to look like the Mountaineers. They don't want to look like West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> it is a true rivalry. You know, we're only an hour, hour and 15 away from Morgantown, and it. Carter is the running back. Tries to pick his way through the right side of the line, able to pick up maybe three yards. Rodney Hammond, the presumed number one running back for nagging injury, but uh, they have said he is available and wearing a red jersey, so I don't know exactly how that works. If you're the running back, how do you play in a red jersey? Yeah, I see how the running back plays. I don't see how the defense treats him. Right. Sitting on the bench along with the quarterbacks in his red jersey. Jewel's Goff is the running back. That uh, pass deflected and falls in. Oh, man. Well, he did not participate in yesterday's 14th and final practice of spring football. And this is the way they wind it down. I do like get excited about it because it, it is a competition. That pass intercepted by Javon McIntyre. Redshirt junior free safety out of Bear, Delaware. Well, he's not going to playmakers on the defensive side for Pitt again this coming fall. Pretty much by the defensive line because, you know, there are a lot of offensive linemen not playing in this game. In fact, three of the five expected starters in the fall are not playing. Their center, Terrence Moore. Haven't had time to get rid of the ball, and that's affected our ability to really sort of appreciate and analyze the offense because of the defense as well. 
Derek Davis Jr., the running back, gets his second straight carry right up the middle. And he is the center is Matt Altman. And they keep it on the ground. And that is a first down. Derek Davis Jr., the LSU transfer, who spent three years in Baton Rouge coming. Big guy, and you saw the list of impact transfers that have come over. And pass complete to Zion Fowler L, redshirt freshman from Jersey City. He is tough. He didn't shy away from anything. He is not afraid of anybody. He's a guy who has great change of direction. He's got great speed. He catches the ball out of the backfield. Really, this is Southern Conference Player of the Year. Reed goes out into the flat. Pass from Yarnell is deflected at the line of scrimmage. You know, setting up the screen. Pass is caught. Desmond Reed. That's the guy. Breaks away. That is the guy. And he's into the end zone for a touchdown, but there is a flag back near the line of scrimmage. If it stands, it'll be a 27-yard score. See what I'm talking about with this guy? You know, who is afraid. 10-yard penalty. Third down. He's not afraid of contact. Thing gold. Reed remains on the field on third down and long. Yarnell buys himself some time, finds a receiver, and the pass is incomplete. Eight coming for Ben Sauls, the number one place kicker for the Pitt Panthers. Hold is good. The southpaw boots it up, and with the wind swirling, that is a impressive field goal. That is something. The gap he has to have. You want to assign him a gap and have him go get it after the snap. Things like that. Maybe well, this, being. this defense, Randy Bates says, you know, we're real deep at safety, still trying to figure out the corners. Ryland Gandy. The offense wasn't going to score. That's an additional burden as a defensive player that you really don't want to have to carry. Here is quarterback Eli Holstein, the redshirt freshman transfer from Alabama, who a year ago, Wednesday in the draft, chose him. That is, that is the most significant thing because players know, and players are out there watching every day, and when the players do a draft, and Full they start. offense number 50 five yard penalty second down he's running the football as well on play action Holstein under a little bit of pressure buys himself some time throws on the run had a man couldn't find him out near midfield it falls Holstein incomplete point. as there is everywhere around the country in the next coming days and so this scrimmage today may make it more clear for certain people hey this is where I want to be or maybe I want to look elsewhere Yarnell are said to be the guys who've taken care of the football the best as well the fewest turnovers during the first 14 practices we did have scrimmages as well feel like you've been around too long and you need to take a look around and he did and decided he needed to be here on the receiving end, that's Gavin Bartholomew, the starting record. And he has a great affinity for the school and for the city and for the program because he was largely under-recruited coming out of Berks Catholic High School in Reading and, and talking to him about the first time he received away and how they show up and how they work. And it's really unique, and I think it's, it's fantastic and fascinating. On second and short, Dejon Reynolds with another catch. That'll move the sticks without your GPS. Just look at Kenny Pickett a couple of years ago. Ball just thrown away by Holstein. Carter was in the area, but well defended. And of course, this is the home. Look out the window and you see the Steelers practice facility right mm -hmm. there. And you see them on the field. That gets your attention. Dejon Reynolds with another catch. He's putting together a nice first half of football. Finally tackled by Pete. He has to be on the list. Yeah, the pride of Oneonta, New York, making sure uh, he is recognized today. I got your back, Mark. Look at those yards after catch by Gavin Bartholomew, which is exactly what Kate Bell, the offensive coordinator, told us yesterday. And you want him to get more touches because he can make people miss or just break tackles. At 84 yards against Tennessee, a speedy team, a couple of years ago. Don't say that to him. <laughs> don't, don't tell him what I did. To the end zone, Holstein. He's got himself a touchdown. Daniel Carter out of the backfield on the receiving end to make the score 9 3.
I, I think that play is one thing you'll see a lot more of out of Pitt this year. The running backs catching the ball out of the backfield because of the matchups. Anytime that you can get a matchup of a running back who can handle the football, can catch the football against a linebacker, that's a matchup that you should take. And that is a, that's a theme in Kate Bell wants is to get matchups and to go with speed. Sam Carpenter with the PAT after the touchdown reception by Daniel Carter, who has been a sustained drive, guided by the Alabama transfer, Eli Holstein. Devin Whitlock. And the whistle comes. And the offense will come. And had good numbers, completed 66% of his passes, four touchdowns and one interception. He is the incumbent to the air on first down, well behind the intended receiver. Month. To the air again on second down. And pass overthrown if it was intended for Kanate Mumfield. Now, if this were a real game, you'd turn around and hand it off, correct? Yes. Instead, Lloyd goes in motion, swings it out to him. Lloyd gets out of bounds at around the 15-yard line. The clock goes to triple That's zeros. The the first half. And that indeed ends the first half of the annual blue goal game here at the University of Pittsburgh. 10-3 our score as we learn what the 20 are yours first. Um, I think Pitt fans should be excited about how wide open this offense is. A lot of deep shots in the first half. And you saw uh, Desmond Reed show you something out of the backfield. He's a running back, past receiver, tight end. Bar the Penn State transfer who started five games last year for Pittsburgh hands it off to Rodney Hammond. And with that red jersey, it will take nothing to get the whistle blown by the official. But against Wake Forest. Yeah, good quarterback, but has apparently been jumped in practice by Holstein, so he is working out of, out of the to play well today and see if he can uh, move up the ladder. Bayer with time, a clean pocket Ooh. pass. Incomplete Zion Fowler at yeah. the yard line with Kenny Johnson back at his 35-yard line to receive. He calls for a fair catch. Steps out of bounds at the 41-yard line after all he'd been through. I can't imagine how tough all that was for his family and his close friends to see him back out there. Had to be really... Players in the history of this program, five years here at Pitt, second team All-ACC, six career interceptions, late round pick of the Buffalo Bills, and hopefully years to come in yeah. the NFL. Terrific player. And the California kid has his pass deflected. And it falls incomplete. Came from Western Carolina. And his goals are very lofty. Of course, every offensive coach would want for his team to, you know, go for 500 yards. Knows the pace and the tempo, knows the calls, knows the verbiage, and can help his teammates get up to speed as well. Well, he can help teammates, but it also gives him a guy like Reed and a guy get to help their teammates as well. Yep. And C.J. Lee not suited up for the scrimmage. He and Raphael Poppy Williams, the two receivers who aren't playing. And again, for this scrimmage, it's essential. A promising young freshman defensive lineman not playing. And then most notably, perhaps, in the defensive backfield, the guy who everybody has been talking about on the pass that's incomplete, trying to find Montre. Logo stickers. They are big, massive stickers to let everybody on the field know you have been a playmaker. And, and that's something defensive coordinator Randy Bates is looking to get back to. They want more big playmakers on the defensive side. Do that both in the defensive backfield, but also on the edge up front. They have some pretty enticing defensive ends who can make plays. There's a nice play defensively coming up to make the tackle by Rich. Freshman from York, PA, motions left. Good pursuit by Rasheem Biles. That's Ball a came fumble. out, was it a fumble? Opportunity on third down and 15 from the 40-yard line. Flushed. Eyes downfield. Has the pass complete, but out of bounds. The receiver, Junko who is the number one punter, although Cam Gasses look good this spring as well. Junko with the opportunity to punt. It goes out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. Field. 
had a carry a couple plays ago. Third down, this should be his area. And indeed, he takes the handoff, works his way for a gain of three to bring up fourth down and one. And they're going to go for it on fourth and short. Hit in the backfield. And it looks like it's Lovelace again, who was an impact true fresh. Say that the ingredients are there. Uh, nothing that has been said by the staff or the players tells me that there is. But, you know, as we talked about in the first half, Nate Yarnell has not had an extended stretch to run. I, I think Nate Yarnell is number one. I think he's the clear number one. I think he is loved by the staff. I think they love his work habits and they love everything about him. I think the only question is, you know, playing well. We, it's hard to judge the quarterbacks today in this game because the defensive lines have been so dominant. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the important things is that, you know, Christian Bayer has been out there and has, has looked solid, looked good. And I don't know if he can push and get back to the number two spot. You know, we're scholarship quarterbacks anywhere in the country. No, and that's the case at the moment for Pittsburgh. Dejon Reynolds off the strike from Diefenbach. Three as well. Yeah. Full start. Well. Offense, number 55. Five yard penalty. First down. That's BJ Williams. The. Short pass caught by Goff. Jedo Jebway is the young man who transferred from Clemson to Pittsburgh inside the ACC. Johnson down the sideline and into the end zone. An 18-yard touchdown pass play. Basic hornbook stuff you want to do. Get the ball out. Let your lineman get down the field and block the corner out of the way. Perfectly timed screenplay. Love the way Johnson came off the line of scrimmage to drive back the cornerback, which allowed the lineman to come out and make the block. The, the GMs, the captains for the blue team, regret some of the selections they made? Yes, yes. yes. absolutely. That point after is good one. Oh, what a magnificent NFL career just finished by Donald and James Conner with the uh, Arizona Cardinals in the midst of a terrific career. And we've already seen DeMar Ham Outside anyway. Yeah, we, we decided we weren't going to be inside. We're going to go outside and deal with the elements. And you know what? Nobody complained. No belly aching from any players about it. It's too cold. It's too wet. None of that. They're like, let's go. Yarnell's going to run it. Don't touch him. <laughs> Whistle comes. It's a first down. You know, when you uh, play in the Northeast and in the city of Pittsburgh, you have to November and later. Well, coaches are always balancing great tackle. Okay, I want my team to get out in the elements, and I want to toughen them up, versus I want to have a good practice. A freshman defensive back from Fort Lauderdale out of Cardinal Gibbons High School. Yarnell throws that's, it away, and we've got another flag coming. That's a sack. It should have been a sack. James Conner of the Arizona Cardinals. How are you, sir? I don't know if James can hear us, but we will. Coach Narduzzi watching his gold team lead his blue team 17 to 3. Lot. Second down, 10. Yarnell throws a strike. Played behind Hudson Card in high school. To the end zone. It's a touchdown for Yarnell. Put it right on the money. 34 yards. And on the receiving end, Lamar Seymour, a true freshman out of Miami Central High School. We were just talking about Yarnell's arm strength and the fact that this team, this offense, takes more deep shots. And that was a beautifully thrown ball. A great route, great little post route. And he did the essential thing. He gave his receiver a chance. Put air under the ball and let him run underneath it. Well, Tamarian Crumpley was the defensive back who was beaten on that play. Ben Sauls. 
with the point after. I was treated while we was here. You know, the University of Pittsburgh, you know, came in when I was 18, and uh, it was all hands on deck. Everybody on staff and when I was there just, uh, you know, embraced me, helped me. You got guys still like Coach Asala and Coach Narduzzi. Season with 1,000 yards rushing. Uh, so they all listen to you. What, what do you tell them? Uh, man, I just tell them to have fun playing the game. That's the most important thing, you know, because uh, with the business part of it and how much work is actually required. To, you know. And then you got drafted by the Steelers and only had to go to the other side of the building. What was that experience like for you? Yeah, it was, uh, it was awesome, especially being a student at the time, you know, just uh, knowing that the Steelers were right there practicing and uh, being able to watch those guys, you know, that was the ultimate end goal was to get to the NFL. So This building and got the game ball leading the Cardinals to a win. How did, how did that feel for you? Oh, that was awesome. You know, it was awesome. I definitely wanted to come in there and try to have a big game, uh, get the victory, um, and uh, also see old friends and family. Football player, and, uh, you know, injuries are part of the game, uh, hardships, trials, and tribulations, but everything you go through, you know, there's something better on the other side. So, uh, yeah, I'm just in that. Like I've said, I'm in it for the long haul. You know, I want to have a, a great career and make a great career out of it. For the first time, it, a local quarterback out of Penn Hills High School, Julian Duggar, Montravius Lloyd with the football, able to pick up about seven yards on the play. And by the way, if we didn't mention it, we have a Frelick and Aaron Donald out of Penn Hills. Montravius Lloyd. Now, he was said to be the most unhappy player about not being the teammates well enough before the draft. Nope. Well, the uh, redshirt freshman from St. Petersburg, Florida, getting his opportunity here in the fourth quarter out on the field. What a tremendous trying to pass along what it means to be a Pittsburgh football player. Yeah, well, you, you see, leadership can come also just in the form of how you play and how you go about your business, and he's showing that today. Being any easier in the ACC, which, by the way, has gotten larger. Your alma mater. We're now 2024. Flag comes down before the uh, ball is thrown by Julian Duggar. Yeah, SMU. Red. Getting an opportunity to play with 3.30 and counting left in the fourth quarter. Franklin puts it up. And incomplete. Win in August. They open up the regular season here against Kent State. Yeah, and I think it's, I think it's imperative for Pitt to get off backyard brawl. And as you mentioned, uh, you notice Cal and SMU on the schedule. Those are conference games, and so... November 2nd at SMU. That's a beautiful campus. Good time. Tenth season. Won an ACC championship back in 2021. And now no divisions. Top two teams will play in the ACC championship uh, game. Wrap things up. Although it looks like play's continuing. That's a sack. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Acrisure Stadium, where we have a final score in the Pitt Spring game. Gold 17, blue 10. That means a steak dinner for the boys in white or gold, and tofu hot dogs for the blue. Whatever that is. 